For the goose hunting expedition, our party chose to go to Hanna in southern Alberta, Canada, located 535 miles east-northeast of Vancouver in British Columbia as the crow flies, and 105 miles northeast of Calgary, and only 188 miles north of the American border. To be considered more of a family affair, the group includes Vern Greensword, his wife Sylvia, and son Doug, Vern's father, and his brother Ken. They arrive at their destination to meet Bill Cross and son Randy, who are to arrange the shoot. Hanna is reputed to be one of the best known goose hunting areas in Canada. The geese make the area a stopping and feeding place during their southern migration. These birds have just completed their nesting season in the Arctic. What does the situation look like, Bill? It looks pretty good, Vern, I think, although you never know until you shoot it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they were coming in pretty good this, mo this morning and, and last night. So good. It, it what late? How long have you been feeding? Well, I'd say about two days now, you know, mm -hmm. two to three days. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm tickled to death. What are they, canvas, speckles? They're all canvas. There may be some speckles, but there's a nice, there's a half a dozen real nice uh, canvas coming in. Very good. And uh, the speckles, there's lots of speckles that yeah. you know in this country. Well, I was uh, also on the way up, there was quite a few uh, just along flying around on the road, you know. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, there's some good big canvas there. I know this. It's been about 11 uh, years since I've seen a goose, uh, a, big, a big Canada goose. Well, goose. well, I hope we can give you a good shoot. I hope so, this too. Sort of thing. You know, Vern, we're going to have to get rolling. we got pit fitting. Shall we hit for the cars? You bet your life. Let's yeah, go. Thing is spotting right now. Pit too. I hope you're good on the shovel, pal. How's the digging, by the way? Shelvia? Yeah, good, I hope. Okay. Sand, maybe? Well, maybe. You never know, but I doubt it. Every fall, when migrating geese of many species begin their trek to southern wintering grounds, business in Hanna is almost at a standstill. Everyone is out spotting geese in preparation for arrival of friends in quest of the wary bird. Much work has to be done, spotting where the birds are feeding, preparing decoys such as our neighbors during this shoot are doing. You will notice these decoys are made of a plastic fiber material and are hollow with detachable heads. The body is held into place by a cross stick and stem for impaling into the ground to hold them erect. Decoys have to be very carefully handled and ready. A shot on the surface or a decoy placed on an off angle is one of the many reasons why a flock will suddenly shy away or out of range of the guns. Many hours are spent on spotting the birds in their feeding areas. Pits are to be dug and birds could abandon that field the following feeding time. Many hours are spent in camouflaging the pits on the open prairie game fields where natural blinds are usually non-existent and pitting is the only alternative. How far are we going on this trip, Bill? Oh, it'll be about 25 miles down here, uh, Vern, I think. Approximately, maybe between 20 and 25 miles. What water are they coming from? Coming off Coleman, most of them. And maybe a few off, off Carroll's side. I'm not too sure, you know. You never know with these people yeah. where they're, exactly where they're some, coming from. Some guys coming off uh, that field up by the mines, too, isn't it? Oh, well, that's, that's, what, what, that's what Bunky was telling us. Yeah. Two years ago, we had a terrific shoot on Canada's at uh, Carroll's side. Got some real dandies. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's where Friedel got that 12-pound, uh, 8-ouncer that he took the heaviest goose for the year with. Oh, yeah. The big tray he won that he's, year? Yeah, big copper sure tray. He sure doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he Think sure does. Think he'll be able to make it in the morning? <laughs> well, we're hoping. It uh, seems when I get out here to Hannah, a shoot isn't complete without Friedel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's a pretty busy boy, well, that's trying to get that crop off, and especially the way this weather has been this year. Well, it's been quite unpredictable. Yeah. I'll tell you what I want to do. If we get a big bird to shoot, I want him. I want to get him stuffed. You want a mono, eh? You know there isn't a mono bird in Hannah? You know, no. That, that's unbelievable. Well, isn't it? They're one of the goose centers of Canada. Yeah, eh? that's right. If you spot birds feeding in an area, always find out whom is the owner of the land and ask the farmer's permission. You will usually find them most cooperative and helpful. Then again, you may find that someone has spotted ahead of you and has already been given permission. You got spot, let's go. Let's do some spotting from here. <coughs> We're coming up over here. When we were spotting them last night, they were coming well, up from over in this southwest direction. Yeah, from Coleman, eh? Yeah, over yep. Coleman, yeah. And there was a few come in from off Carroll side down this way. Well. Doug, will you bring my binoculars? Let's get the glasses up to see what I can see here. What? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hearing yet, son? 
You got usually pretty good eyes. You can spot birds or eyes or birds before anybody usually. There's the first flight coming. There they are. Yeah. I can see them now. Yeah. Can you see them? Yeah. Fairly heavy wing beat, Bill. That's Canada's. No, they're Canada's. Yeah. Yeah. Where are the snows coming from? You say there's been the odd snow. It's been the odd snow. I think they're coming on the full moon too. But they usually yeah. they fly in this this other direction up here. Yeah. There they are. Straight west. Those are snows. Tell yeah. the way they're flying. Yeah. yeah. Where's the speckles coming from? I think they're coming from Carol. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a nice flock coming out now. See those, son? Yeah. There's a loner up this other way. Ah, the uh, they're coming over. Starting to fly, Bill. Coming straight over? Yep. There's some going in over there now. See them? Yeah, circling? they're headed for our field. See them circling over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're dropping nice. Yeah. You see those dropping there? They're going down lovely. Have they been all coming in from this direction, or some coming over from Carrow side of that well, field? Well, there's been a few coming from Carrow side. Good. Yeah. Well, there's the thing we got to watch in the morning. Gee, they're dropping, dropping in lovely over there. Look at those birds. Get them go. coming in from every direction. Look at them go in. Look at them. Here's another string. Bill, quick. Over west. There I they come. No, I can't I got see them yet, Vern. Where are they? What are they over? Just I, over. I can't pick them up yet. On the knoll there, there's a grassy spot. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I see them now. Rose bushes, I believe. Yeah. Right Those over are some more good yeah, honkers, eh? Have a look. Those are some good honkers. There seems to be plenty of birds. Well, Vern, I think we're real lucky, boy. We're, oh, it looks good. We're going right into, into Bunky Field again. We, we said we had the permission to shoot it. Wonderful. But on top of that, yeah. for the pits are dug. Terrific. I'm for that at any time. Bandage? We're going to have to dig one or two, maybe. Yeah. Don't but, mind that uh, so much. That won't be so tough. No. Boy, look at them falling oh, in there now. Just rolling hey. in there. They're like homing pigeons. Yes, yeah, sir. That looks real good. Nice sight. Eh? Lovely. Yeah, Lovely. Like I can smell the roast in the pan now. Yeah. Real good groceries. There's some coming right over the hill there. You yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Up there? yeah. I think they've come in from Carroll's side. Yeah. Yeah, they're dropping at night, aren't they? Well, I think we're all right, Vern. Looks wonderful, we're boy. we have to keep our eyes here, though, until those birds go back to water again, yeah. and then we'll go pit in, eh? Fine, Danny. Yeah. Well, if the spotting is any indication, it looks like they're set for a good shoot. Let's see how our neighbors are doing. This pit digging, and believe me, that can be a chore on prairie soil. Always there is a presence of hard pan. The only asset, a heavy foot. Sometimes dynamite is used, but this is not always the answer. The dark earth is then scattered over a large area and will cause the birds to spook unless covered with wheat straw. Imagine all the work of pitting in and the birds decide to make the next field their feeding grounds. Believe me, this often happens. They are very unpredictable. Often with the best of pit camouflage, there could be something unseen by the hunter that will cause the birds to shy away. As a matter of pitting wit with a very clever bird. Well, this looks like the spot, Bernie. Eh? Okay. There we go. Get at her. Boy, well, we're in luck with these four pits. Boy, is that ever a break, eh? Sure, it sure is. Randy, how'd you like to get those shovels out? You want to get yeah. out there. Get them dug. Jump into that, Len, you can do the soft shoe shuffle. See how, how the depth is for you. Huh? See how much we have to clean out. Just oh, drop in the... Some of those weeds out. Yeah. Let's try. Hey, that's not bad. Oh, that should be done. Huh? Sure. Yeah, oh, we can cover that up with this. There's lots of buckets oh, yeah. down here. Sure. sure. This is going to be dandy. That rolling... Uh, tumbleweed makes a well of a good camouflage, especially in the stripping. Yeah. There are a number of species of geese that inhabit this area as a feeding ground during the southern migration to their wintering haunts in the regions of southwestern United States and Mexico. The most common is the Canada goose, of which there are five species, the common, western, and lesser Canada, the Richardson, and the cackling geese, all similarly marked, but they do differ in weight. They will range from the common or honker, the male averaging eight pounds, the largest known to be on record, 13 pounds, 12 ounces, to the cackling male, average three pounds, six ounces, the heaviest on record being five pounds, nine ounces. Their generic or scientific name, Branta canadensis, 
are known as in various areas as honkers, bay goose, black neck goose, and ring neck. They migrate from Mexico and southern United States into the Arctic regions to nest in June, laying five to six creamy white eggs. They mate for life, the mother handling the incubation and the father assists with the feeding. The gander is believed responsible for training the young to navigate the flyways. Their flight speeds, being chased, has been recorded up to 60 miles an hour. In normal flight, they will cruise from 20 to 45 miles an hour. During long flights in migration, much of this is done at night. Another well-known species to the area is the snow goose, or wavy, as they are often called because of their erratic flight. They too migrate many miles from the deep south to the Arctic areas of Canada and the Aleutians and Siberia. Many are banded by the Russians and are found feeding in this same prairie region. Also, the white-fronted, or better known as a speckled belly, frequents the prairie wheat fields in large numbers during their early movement south. They are usually the first to migrate to the winter grounds. Well, shall we try them for size, Vern? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Rest, you can get your guns now. We'll try these pits for size. That's a wheel of a good camouflage job. Bill? Well, you done we can yourself. Do, we can do a little fixing up here on these. Done yourself proud on this. Tell me, when I get down, can you see me? Oh, it's my hidden burn. No, sir, you're hidden real good. How about, how about the gun barrel, Bill? No, it's right down to good. it. Check me now, will you? Okay. Oh, dandy. You got lots of room there. Yeah, and I can see good, too. Yeah. No, that's, that's real good. Now, Randy, you can get in yeah, here with minutes. me. Yeah, oh, we just about forgot those. Randy, you can come in this pit with me. Here, Randy, you take my, take these keys to get that car hidden. It's not going to be long. Okay, you take my gun then, Dad. Okay. Yeah. Move it after Randy moves our, uh, his. Hide uh, right it well right along with Randy. Well hidden, son, won't you? Okay. Well, Vern, we're here. Looks good. Are you going to get in that pit, Len? Where's Sylvia, you might as well take the one down on the other side of Len's. That'll give us give us good coverage. We'll check you for make sure you're you're hidden well too. Well, I'll check all these fits again now. Make sure we're well well camouflaged. Looks good from here. Well, this one doesn't look looks all right down here. Yeah. Well, look at how about you boys come up here and get in your butts? Who wants who's going to shoot Magnum this afternoon? What size shot do you want? Four is for me. You want mags, Bill, or just regular no, hands? I want mags, Vern. Yeah. Okay. Good. Randy? I'll have mags too. You good. And. Uh, I'm good. High base load. We handle those to Sylvia. No, oh, those are 12s, Len. Oh. The 16? Yeah, Sylvia's 16. Dad? Well, give me a four, a number four. Long range? Long range, yeah. Fine. Right. Well, I'm going to shoot some mags myself. You get enough shells, Randy? Yeah, my grab lot. That's good. Everybody set? We should be hitting those pits again. They'd be birds should be coming any time. Coming over that hill, it would be a little hard to see probably. Until they're right on us. Pits in order, decoy set. Now for the controversy over the size of shot to be used. This is always a matter of preference. Check the goose call. Make sure it's tuned up to pitch. Fever mounts. Now, after all this preparation, will the geese take this field to feed? There's some coming from the west. Everybody down. Right. They're coming in, Bill. There is always one man assigned to be the pit boss. In effect, he is to call a shot at the exact moment when the birds are in range. There's some birds out left there. 
Is they swinging this way, Bill? Are they swinging? Sure. Sure they are. All right, everybody down. They're built. They're built. They're coming in. They're, uh, not, they're ways yet, but they're coming. Give them a call, Burn. Okay. The birds flare just out of range. Decoys are checked once again. Quite possibly one of the decoys could have fallen over. The slightest suspicion and Mr. Goose is long gone. Maybe someone moved in the pit. One of the hunter's guns may have been visible, causing a glare in the sun. Now let's see how our neighbors are doing right now. It appears one is most certainly enjoying the shoot. <laughs> Three times a piece, I think. <laughs> Broke a decoy. <laughs> what brought it? Goose all in the Did he? <laughs> yeah. It appears our neighbors are getting their fair share of birds, save for one of their members. Their pits are very well concealed. Our own party appears to have bagged a few also while we were away. Birds are usually picked up after each kill. A dead bird with wings spread on the ground among the decoys could spook the next flock. The bag limit is a generous four birds per gun. The birds are excellent eating after a diet of green. Uh, can't see anything yet. He's down! Where are they, Vern? They're coming in. Just a, a shade over that hill there from that uh, greenery. Yeah, I got, I got him now. North and west. I got him now. They're headed over. You better give him a call, Ricky. Huh? 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 Coming in nice. Huh? Huh? Come in, 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 well, who got this one, Dad? I got that one. Well, I hit one. I don't know if we had one run. Well, we need to that one out there. 14 guys. You shot. I was right on the third and it didn't come. I know I hit one. I don't know how many more hit two. I never knew I it. Don't know why I shoot that one sat down at all. Hey? I didn't know it on the pin yet. No. There are a large number of snow geese or wavies feeding in this area. Many of them could have migrated from Russia. Our party killed one bird during this shoot that was banded in the USSR. An estimated count of 450,000 birds migrate and nest in the island of Urangel in the Soviet Union. Hunting in Russia differs slightly from that in this country. All game birds and game animals are state-owned. All properties where game is found is also state-owned. Such lands are leased out by the state to cooperative collective farm and public hunting organizations for exploitation. There are some 2,500,000 members in these clubs. All game shot is turned over to the state for distribution. There are no private hunting areas in the USSR. If the hunter wishes to retrieve his game that he has killed, he can in turn buy same back from the collective agency. Now! No, they're too... Bill, don't call They're up there 40 yards, you see. Way, way too soon. As long as the geese will keep coming, say to yourself, let them come, let them come, until they get above your head. Doug, will you snap it? There's geese coming. Everybody down, they're coming. Geez, look for southwest, Bill. 
Hey, where did he go? Get down, everybody. There's beast just all over the place. <laughs> Family flights, Bernie. We're good. I'm glad we got speckles along with the uh, candidates. Hey, can I go get them? Might as well. Yeah, there's no more well. coming now, son. Might as well pick up. I'll well, pick that way over there. Yeah, we we'll clear that in case more comes in because the uh, dead birds with the wings up will frighten them off. The feeding geese in this area are on their leisurely migration south. They may stay in this general area until heavy frosts appear, and then only will they gradually move further to the south. The weather could be beautiful and sunny, and many birds around. The next morning, they could have all left the country. That is the indication that cold weather is on the way. The birds seem to have a second sense and move out just before the cold wave sets in. Up a nice pickles. Canada over there, sure, nice bird. Yeah, that's one Sylvia you got. Yeah, that's a dandy. Oh, I don't know. I'd say go uh, ten, ten and a half pounds. You're asking Dad about uh, tulies. Yeah. Well, they're the same as a speckle, or they're a larger version. In a similar manner, you've got three distinct species of Canadas here. There's the big honker. You can tell by the big bill. Here's the little. <coughs> Hutchison's goose, the small bill. And this chap here is there's one of your lesser Canadas. Well, there's three distinct species of Canada geese. That's an adult uh, white American white front. Or speckle bill is a colloquial name. Those are all adult birds. The adult birds have that black bars in their breast. Turn that one over, Bill. So they can see there. There's a real prime specimen. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real prime. Juvenile birds, you know, speckles, won't have that black breast. And their feet are more of a yellow color. The adult birds get the white patch. That's where they get the name white front. There's a patch up over the head. And that black on the breast can vary from speckles like that to a, a, almost a jet black breast. Everybody for coffee. Let's load up. Everybody grab, grab a few birds there. Take them back to the car. Our hunting party appear to have been extremely successful during the shoot. They may be a bird or two short of the bag limit, but nevertheless, they have fine geese for the table and many tales to tell. our hunters traveled into the central portion of British Columbia to Cunningham Lake, located 500 miles north of Vancouver, British Columbia. There are no roads into the area, so our group decided to travel by airplane into one of the most fabulous moose hunting areas and to found anywhere in Canada. You must be Carl. Uh, where's yeah. Bill? Well, he's in the cabin, just warm up the coffee and getting ready on you. Oh, that's swell. We could do with a cup of coffee. This is Alf Strom. This is Carl. Pleased to meet you there. Yeah, um, 
Well, we had a pretty good trip there now. Yeah, yeah, really how was the weather out there? I like your sheltered bay here. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty nice setup Excuse here. The place you got wind here. can't get at the plane any direction. Many such beautiful lakes are to be found throughout the province. Well, it's uh, nice to get rid of the uh, hunters. They're a nice bunch of fellas and all that, but now that we can uh, relax and go and get some of our own meat, and you can get a bunch of those char that you've always wanted to catch and, and smoke. For a long time. And Carl, I guess you, uh, you've never shot a moose, have you? No, well, my entire life. It's well, my first I guess, hunting clip in here. I guess you'll be wanting a nice bull. Sure would like to look forward to it. Yeah, well, we can do that, I think. Of course, uh, Bill, I know Bill is wanting to get his winter's meat, and he'll be wanting a dry cow the same as I will. Better get that guy out here and let him know what's going on here. Sure will. Okay. Bill Dennett is the chief cameraman on this expedition. Well, hi, George. Hi, Bill. Nice, nice seeing you again. Sure is. And who's your friend here? This is Al Strone, Bill Great. Dennett. Glad to know you indeed, Al. Nice and what about these moose? Uh, you figure the chances are pretty good, uh, George? Oh, same as last year. This is going to be something different, George. Here's a the guide. He's now going to turn hunter. Here we got the camera crew. They're going to turn hunters. We're going to get ours, too, we hope. This is a Bushman's and cameraman holiday. Well, George, uh, if what you had here last year and previous years is any recommendation, I see we're going to have no trouble whatsoever. Yeah, and we're going to have a little fun getting Carl in on a nice big bull. Moose. We've got the weather. Let's go try it. Let's go get him. Fine, right, George. You got the coffee on. Oh, yes, it's boiling. It's, it's ready now. Oh, well, let's get some. Our enthusiastic hunters are Carl Omig, Alf Sprome, George Davis, and Bill Dennett. They have traveled to one of the best moose areas in the country, virtually untouched by man-made access through the medium of road. Let's see, we've got the ax, we've got the ropes, uh, Alf, eh? Got the, uh, everything here, got the tools, got everything spare. Well, we're all set to go. Now, Carl, be careful of that gun in the boat. Keep that muzzle up and don't ever point it at anybody. Okay. Now watch it. You've got to be very careful or you turn a good trip into a calamity. So let's get going. Now you got your shells and yeah, everything's, everything's all ready there. Everything's Alf, all you're right going to do the glassing, eh? Right, I'll do the glassing. Well, let will start the motor and get out of here. Are you all right there? Is the nose untied? The seems to be good, uh, yeah, it'll be a real good day, I think. Just a minute, I'll untie that nose here. Yeah, I get it. Coming. There we are. Typical cow and a calf there, Carl, now. Boy, they're sure big animals. Yeah. See the long Just legs? Boy. That's Lit. typical, the long legs and the long nose, you see. For what does the moose feed off? Well, those particular ones are feeding off the, the weeds in the bottom along the verge of the lake, you see. Well, so we're, we, uh, we're not, uh, we're not going to take it, but I'm going to take you in there, and we'll take you in close, and you'll be able to, I'll show you where you're supposed to hit one of those animals, and you'll get a good close look at her. Oh boy, that's sure a big animal there. You see, we don't want, we never take a, a cow with a calf. We're out What's for mean? a dry cow now, a cow that's barren, that has no calf with her, you see. Because if we, well, if we took that cow now, there's only about 20% chance that the calf would come through the winter, see? Oh, it's still going uh, with the motherhood like. That's right. Well, she breaks a path in the snow for the calf and protects it. Oh, they're pretty, uh, sure big, pretty animals. They're a pretty tough fighter, that cow moose with its front feet, you know. There's no question Mother Moose will have her problems fending for herself and calf during the mean winter months to come. 
Okay, Carl, you can sit up ahead along with Al okay. there and I'll get the motor going. Inside that snag up there. Yeah, right up oh, yeah. How does she look? I think that's the barren cow. I think it's a barren cow. Uh, I don't see any calf with it. It's alone, anyway. Now just make sure that we're no use wasting our time going in there. Can't what? see any. I don't see any calf with her, George. They can't, eh? No. Well, I'll hurry. Well, I'll oh, go right all alone. for It's a nice looking animal from here. Say, by the way, uh, you're not going to use that little pea shooter of yours on that thing, are you? Well, certainly, George. Certainly, uh, why not? Ah, uh, here, why don't you use a real rifle? Why don't oh, you do I'd never hit anything with that, George. Now, I'll use this one. Hey, you better uh, concentrate on this. Well, you guys. I'll be ready to back him up anyway. Well, I won't need any backing up, don't you worry, uh, George. No, I wouldn't say that, no. Well, I'm sitting right there in the open. She's feeding. Hadn't even seen us. Huh? She hadn't even seen us. Say, that's a dandy, Bill. That's a dandy. Oh, yeah. Let me have another. Better, uh... Get ready to get us in the position there, George? Yeah, I'm all ready. You just get up there and get set. You watch your job. I'll look oh, after mine. Okay, okay. You just make sure you put that shot the right place. Oh, don't worry about that. Nice okay. clean kiss. I won't need you backing up on this, George. No, oh, well, I'll tell you what, George, just in case. Just in case, but I don't think I'll so. I'll be all ready for you there, fella. No, I don't think so. Uh, we'll just take it easy now. No, oh, that'll be a nice shot. Going good, George, just the way we're going. Okay, Bill. Now, don't forget, you make that first shot count. Nice don't shot. worry. Okay, George, it's about now. All set. Don't rock the boat. All right, take it easy, take it easy. That's got her. I didn't think you had it in you to get uh -huh. one shot kill. That was a nice clean kill, too, George. Oh, yeah, that's the way we like to have them. I hate to see an animal hit and wounded. Boy, that's a real dandy. You gave me got some good eating there, Bill. Oh, uh, good meat. That's what I wanted, George. Very good indeed. I'd like to have had a chance to, uh, to call a bull in for you, but uh, they're, they're, they're not that... Just uh, off-season. Yeah, just off-season. They're just coming back in. Well, you're, you're cropping, George. You're the only uh, guide in this area. I guess you're cropping. They're just about right for this particular that's, area. That's right. We watch it pretty closely. That's why we like to take two or three cows now and again uh, for fellas like yourself or myself for the good meat in the winter, and it keeps a balance. Those barren cows are no good. They're not breeding. They're most likely not fertile anyway, you see. So... Uh, the balance there. I guess uh, that is important. The crop, a certain amount of cropping is important. Uh, oh, yeah. Some people may say, oh my gosh, look at them around slaughtering those animals. But I, I suppose, George, in, in time, if they weren't properly cropping in disease or famine or lack of that's, food, that's someone right. would die. That's right. Well, George? Yeah. Well, I'll help you uh, dress that animal. How about a little of that char fishing you promised me? Okay, that's the deal. We'll go over there and dress her up, and then we'll go char fishing, eh? Beautiful Cunningham Lake also boasts excellent lake trout fishing. Char, as they are often called, range up to 40 pounds. <laughs> well, this is the spot, Alf. We'll try and catch a few char here while we're waiting for those moose to come out, eh? Oh, good. That sounds real good. How big do these char get here, George? Oh, well, they run around 38 and 40 pounds, the biggest one, but the general run is around 12, 15, 18 pounds. Well, well, this is the spot, so get your gear going and we'll fly at her. Well, we'll see who's going to be the first one to catch a char this morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know how to run that wheel all right there, Carl? I'll give you a, I'll give you a demonstration in a minute. Well, you fish for... I guess, Carl, you've never before. seen a char before, eh? Have you... Huh? Well, now is your chance. You're going to see one very shortly. Here. Uh, take it easy now. That line isn't too strong, you know. 
Yeah, that's... Well, you... You scored first. There you see him? Yeah, that's a fair size. I guess we'll take a few of these home to smoke, too, eh? Oh, yeah. Huh? You like smoked char, don't you? Oh, they're wonderful. There, there, there he's coming. Oh, oh boy, he's a fish. Yeah, he's a nice fish. Just a moment, I'll give you a hand there. Take a look at him, Carl. See him? You got the net up there? There he is. Oh. There he is, see him? That's a nice fish. You betcha. Huh? Well, we got the uh, gaff here. That's just as easy. <coughs> There he is. Oh, there you are. Oh, that's a pretty nice fish. How do you like that, Carl? Beautiful. That's about, how heavy would you say that? Oh, that's about 15 pounds, 16 yeah, pounds. 16 pounds. Yeah, we got to give him the coup de tie here. Well, we have a spectator watching the fishing. A playful weasel in his winter coat. Well, we got to treat this one kind of usually. This is only nine and a half pound test line, you know, Al. There he goes. He's taking off. There he goes. You talk about fight. <laughs> the one's got it all in it, eh? Yeah, he's got lots of fight in him, this fella. Oh, he's starting to tire now, I think. Oh, yeah, he can only last so long against the bend of that pole, and he's got to come. There he is. Oh, well, let Carl go. All right, oh. Carl. Oh. Just a moment, I'll get him in position for you here. And there you are now. In the mouth. In the lower lip there, Carl. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait till I get him up again. Get him through that lower lip. Wait a minute. No. Don't be in a hurry now. He's still got quite a bit of life in him. All right, Carl. Now get him through the lower lip. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a little smaller than yours, though, Alf. Yeah, where's that? Give him the... Yeah. All right, Alf, I guess that's enough char. Uh, the moose should be coming out now. Well, the weather sure turned nice all of a sudden, eh? Yeah, oh, that's the way out. it is. We have enough char for a feed anyway, sir. So. Yep, so Should let's we go, go look around for a moose? Yeah, that's what we'll do right now. Carl, you better get your rifle ready. I saw quite a few uh, barren cows, dry cows around here, so let's go and see if we can get one. I guess we'll go over to the other side there, eh, George? Yeah, straight across. Hand me your rods and I'll put them out of the road here. Okay. Okay, Carl. All set? All set. All right, uh, Carl, will you hand me your rifle? Surely. And I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll go up and, and get my meat now, Carl. Yeah. And Al, yes, you, yeah. run, you run the kicker this time. Okay. And I'll uh, do the glassing. All right. I was up uh, this way yesterday, you know, before you got here. Oh, yeah? The other day. Yeah. And uh, I saw two nice-looking cows over here, two barren cows. Well, that's what I want. About a mile those, down here. One of those nice barren cows. Well, you take us in the same bays. They might All be right. there. In the meantime, so, you can keep your eyes open with those glasses. Then. Yeah, I'll spot all the way up anyway, just in case. So uh, let's get on the way, then. All right. around that corner there. Okay, George. Oh, Cutter, there's three of them in there. There's three. Do you see them? Oh, yes, I see them. Which one do you want me to aim for, George? The take Which that? one do you want to take? Take the left-hand one, the closest one, otherwise we'll spook the other ones. Okay. Take the one on the left. i got to get up there, Carl. Okay, I'll just over a little bit to the right. 
cut her off and just ease up slowly. That's dandy. You're just going perfect now. Just ease up a little bit more. Is that steady enough, George? Yeah, that's fine. Just paddle exactly the way you're going, and I've got her. Oh, that's a that's a dandy. That's a beautiful animal. That looks like a nice animal, George. That's a dandy. Just keep her going the way you are, Alf, and we got her. You got your winter's meat there, boy. Yep. Uh, just hold her steady now. Hold her on now, boy. Okay. Okay. Steady. Steady. Boy. That's got her. That's the way That's I like to see them drop, George. That's a nice clean kill, eh? That's a humane kill, that one. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice cow. Never felt a thing. Never felt a thing. Well, that's not far to take her over to that beach there, uh, no, Al. She'll be nice. We'll uh, get her cleaned out and nothing flat. Okay. You want me to... Uh, you, know, you, run, for you? you run the kicker and bring her alongside, and I'll put the rope around her neck, hawk her up, and we'll take her right out of there. Okay. George, how long have you been hunting moose in this country now? Well, going on 12 years now, Bill. 12 years? Yeah. How many, uh, how many moose do you estimate there is in this country? They seem to be very plentiful. Oh, there's uh, that's a uh, $64 question. It's the finest moose country in the world as far as I'm concerned. You notice all the feed around the lake? Oh, it's excellent. That's not even been touched, and yet you've seen all the animals. What is it we've seen? Oh, gosh, we've seen about 12 or 14, and we, we, we haven't been hunting hard. We just started no. playing around. Well, that's it, you see, and uh, the animals aren't really starting. Just starting to come back to the water now. The party seems to be doing extremely well. Two down. Now we'll see if we can't get a moose for Carl. He's definitely after a trophy. He's not after one of these smaller bulls. Let's see how he gets along. There's a big trophy bull right up in front of us here. Okay, Alf, will you come back and paddle the boat? Boy, sure is a beauty. Look at the rack on it. Now, Carl, I want you to watch exactly what I do. Okay. Do that. All right, Carl, now you watch. Yeah? Now, Alfred's going to just paddle it slowly in there, and you get right on the front of the boat in position like this. Yeah? And hold straight on. You rest both of your elbows on top of the boat. Rest both your elbows on and make a rest like this, yeah? like a tripod. And pull the rifle tight into your shoulder. Get your finger on the trigger. And when your sight is right on that hump, yeah. you just slowly squeeze. Squeeze on it. Now you see? You see how he's standing broadside to us there? Yeah. All right. Just as the, just right on the hump, just come down eight inches, hold that bead right below there, hold it steady, and squeeze, and he'll go down with one shot. Oh, boy, look now at you that. You got that straight, isn't he a beauty? Yeah. Boy, look at that beauty. Look at the size of those horns. That's a trophy oh. bull. He's pretty near 60 inches. Just a little too much rifle instruction. There's one trophy bull that really got away. Okay, I'll take the battle here. Drag. All right, Carl, come on now. Get that rifle, get some shells in there. Okay, I've got the shelf right here. Come on now. Okay. okay. Motor full. How many you put in? Put four. Four in. Now you put this. That's right. Hold her open. Load them in. That's the way. Like this? That's you it. Take them in. That's right. Got lots of time. There's not no no rush now. You, that animal's feeding you. No. Right? Okay now. Just push her forward. Just push her forward. That's it. Down like she goes. Pull the safety on. And it's That's no it. Pulling. Okay. That's on. All right now you get up the way I showed you with the other bull. All 
Now just make sure you're nice and steady and got a real good support. You feel comfortable now? Yeah. Okay. And squeeze. You're getting all ready? Yeah. Are you right are you right on him now, Carl? Right up and a high right, shoulder. Steady, just pull now, steady. Oh, you're high, you're high. Come down lower on him. Loud quickly now. Now steady, take your time. Just down a little lower. Yeah, you got him that time. Boy, look Good at him shot. Go. That's a dandy. Boy, look at him How go do you right like up. that? Boy, he went down nice. like a ton of bricks. Boy, that's a real trophy for you, Carl. Boy, we come at it. What do you think of that now, huh? Boy, what a beauty, eh? That's a beauty. Okay, Alf, we'll move in a little bit now. Carl is now a seasoned hunter, having bagged his first moose. Well, Carl, how did you enjoy that? Boy, I sure was scared huh? of the rifle. But you're still shaking. You're still shaking a little bit, eh? A little bit. But I got him. How are you going to get those animals out there now? Well, I, that's the uh, the real work comes now. You had the fun a minute ago, now we start to work. We're going to go in there with this boat, put a long line on him, roll him over a couple of times, and then tow him out into deep water. Do the, does the animal float? Well, yeah, all his hairs, his, all, every little hair is a, a floater. Mm -hmm. But the thing is to get him out into deep water first, and then we take him over to a nice spot over in the point across the way, haul him out where it's nice and comfortable to clean him. Yeah, we got the head for my Well, boy. you've got it, and it is ever a good one. Oh, boy, on sure here. is heavy here. Okay, I got it. Watch those horns. Don't want to break them. Along. Boy, is he ever heavy? Okay, that's yeah, fine. Uh, There's a lot of weight in those horns in that head, isn't there? Eh? Big head, that is. Yeah, but look at here. Look at how how beautiful and even it is, eh? Boy, look at this. Sure nice up. See this? Perfect. Perfect. One, two, what three, would... four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful head. Well, what would you say the split is of this? Oh, that's roughly 50 inches, 50, about 50 inches, I'd say. Well, it'll make a nice gun arc, dead well. After a very successful hunt, it's back to base camp with memories to fill the evening conversation for many hours. Well, Alf, let's get this stuff out of here and get tied up. Get it. Here's your old chart. Why, golly, they... Handle with care. Handle with care, he says. The big old brutes. And here's this little mid-sized trophy of yours, Carl. What do you mean, that precious little uh, hag? Little, little, little old bull moose. And oh. something, boy. Come. Let me see now. Don't damage those horns now, or Carl will be after you. Oh, yeah, that's Look pretty at that. nice. 